Welcome inside a sold out Cottage Grove Ice Arena, where the rink's two tenants battle tonight in a spirited suburban East clash between the visiting East Ridge Raptors and the post in the host Park Wolf Pack. Good evening, everyone. I'm Bill Hupp, alongside my broadcast partner, Mark Hodgins. Proud to be bringing you the South Washington County Hockey Classic here tonight. And Mark, it's a game between two local rivals. They share the same rink, and these two teams know each other very well. Countless stories, Bill, on and off the ice. Two potent offenses tonight, and a first-time varsity goalie starting. Yeah, should be interesting, a lot of interesting storylines. But now let's throw it down to a third member of our broadcast crew, Blythe Whaley, who had a chance to catch up with both coaches before the game. this game. Also, just making sure that they're taking care of that blue line, of course, disciplined on that as well. But another thing that is one of those big moments tonight that maybe could happen is Grant Conan is on pace for that school record in points. So 44 is that magic number. He's sitting at 39. So who knows? Anything can happen, guys. But also got to talk with Coach Jay Moser, and he was telling me that really comes down to high energy. He thinks this game, of course, this sold-out crowd. You can feel the energy, guys. And he thinks it's really going to be the team that keeps that energy up, and that is going to be the team that wins tonight. Thanks, Blythe. Blythe Whaley, she'll be having interviews with the coaching staff in between each of the periods and uh, certainly some great insights provided and, and energy, always a key ingredient in these kind of games, Mark. Always a sold out house tonight. It's great to see it. Student section below us, we're surrounded by the park student section, the East Ridge section down to the left side of us. And what an environment tonight, Bill. It always is a great game, no matter what the record but this year, both the Raptors and the Park Wolfpack having great seasons. Yeah, no question. But the big storyline tonight, Mark, for Eastridge, uh, directly involving your son, Jack Hodgins, the normal starter for Eastridge tonight. He's being replaced by JT Drum after being injured in the previous game against Coon Rapids. Yeah, Jack is having a great year and tough injury against Coon Rapids. Going to be out for a couple of weeks for sure, but JT Drum gets to stage. I think he's going to do a great job tonight for Eastridge. So JT Trum, you wonder what kind of nerves are going through his mind right now as the uh, two teams are being introduced. And one of the kids that JT Drum is going to have to stop, Jackson Rood for the Park of Cottage Grove Wolfpack. 20 goals and 27 assists on the season for the talented sophomore, one of three sophomores that lead the top line for this Park of Cottage Grove team. So a great story, Rood is an elite hockey player. He's out with Corkish and Moss. Those three played all the way through the Park U system and they stay together to come to Park High School. It's a great story and they are electric. Indeed, uh, indeed they are. And uh, they are three scores, this top line of sophomores. They uh, are talented. They each have 35, put more than 35 points. They stir the drink and they make this power play goal. And uh, special teams are really gonna be a key tonight as well. Their power plays 28%, both power plays are incredible. Uh, upper echelon in, in both the conference and in the state. And we talked about it, 120 points already for those three together. And tonight we'll get Aiden Miller in net, another sophomore for Park. We talked about the youth movement. A lot of great sophomores on Park, a very strong junior class for the East Ridge Raptors. Indeed, and indeed, yes. And a junior led uh, uh, group for East Ridge and meanwhile for Park, as we said, sophomores. Aiden Miller in between the pipes, as you said, Mark five and two on the season, a 1.060 goals against average and a 934 save percentage. East Ridge in the gold uniforms of the Black Breezers and trim tonight. Park Ridge, or Park rather, in the black uniforms with the green trim and white lettering and numerals as we step aside for the national anthem.
Chase Arena as we near the top of the hour. A little bit of a late start because of the overtime JV game that we just called. That was a tremendous contest, and we expect more of the same here at the varsity level. The first time these two teams played, Park took a 2-1 lead to the third period, then uh, two Colton Porter goals and a power play tally late made it 5-1. Park has won three straight games over the East Ridge Raptors. They're hoping to make it four straight in a clean sweep for the consec second consecutive season. And Bill, as you said, you know the Raptors, They've been heavily outshot. They've given up the most shots in the conference. If you look at the statistics, they're about 220 more shots on goal than the Park Wolfpack. And tonight, they have to cut the shots down. That's the problem from game one. They were outshot 44-24. It was 34-12 after two periods. And finally, the dam broke in the East Bridge zone with two power play goals. And tonight, with a new goaltender, JT Drummond, they're going to have to lock down the defense. And it's a tough task against this park offense. Yep, it should be interesting indeed as uh, the Raptors will send out Jake Gonzaga, Blake Lighty, Blake Conan, Grant Conan, and Brady Knutson in front of JT Drum. Park, meanwhile, will send out Brandon Blado, Jackson Root, Owen Corkish, Gavin Moss, Taylor Sh Tyler Schwartz in front of Aiden Miller. And we are underway here in the South Washington County TV Hockey Classic between East Ridge and Park of Cottage Grove. East Ridge flips it cross corner and they go to work in the offensive zone. Grabbed there by Caden Schwartz and he backhands it along up the wall to Gavin Moss, one of the three talented sophomores for this Park squad. Board battling along the left half wall, won by Park of Cottage Grove. Cross ice pass finds his way to Tyler Schwartz who goes the zone. Turnover to Rude, and he fires it. Drum makes his first save with the blocker. Long stretch pass tipped into the zone by Brady Knutson. And he goes to pressure Tyler Schwartz. Come up the near side boards, and then it's forced back in deep by the Raptors. Raptors, as their coach said, going to need to bring the energy tonight here on the road, although it's not really on the road. They play a mere maybe... 100 feet down. Not hard to bring the energy when these two teams play. No. Lost a stick, centered out in front. Nice look there by Jack Tauscher, but no one was home. Instead, it's picked up by Park. Good back checking, nearly forces a turnover. Instead, Porter, Colton Porter, gets it in the zone. Eight goals and seven assists on the season for Porter. Two of those coming against Eastridge in the first game. At the point, Lucas throws it in deep. On the backhand. Now Park goes to work in the offensive zone, right wing corner. Back out on high, there's a shot. It goes off the end boards and comes up the near side wall. Battling for it. Porter kicks it, keeps it alive in the zone, and then flips it in deep. It's gloved down in between the rings. Flipped out, Lucas throws it on net. Drum handcuffed a bit. Drum getting some early action here, Mark. That's the way I'm sure he wants it. A couple of ones from deep out, get tested, get yourself into it. Sometimes it's tougher to play a game with no action. Aiden Miller so far, no shots on goal, and you're sitting there and want the first one, and generally from 55 feet out is the best way to take it. Good start, good flow, the first 210 without a whistle. Yeah, a lot of fun. Back and forth we go. Two nothing shots in favor of Park. And off the draw, they win it back cleanly at number nine. Takes a shot, and it's driven down and skated on out. Slam on the brakes, centering pass, and that shot goes whistling wide. Thrown on net from a sharp angle, and it's covered. And they'll take the whistle. So we said, Bill, key, line matchups are going to be key. So Dustin Vogel-Gazan did a great job in the first game when East Ridge was the home team trying to make sure that he keeps the first line out or the second line out against the rude line. There's line three against line three. And right here you see line three against line one. This is a gamble for Eastridge. Well, Eastridge hoping to stay alive. They really like their top line, but uh, yeah, that's the difference, right, between a good high school team and a really great high school team is depth in lines. Turnover forced in the Raptors, center out in front, and. Pass is stolen away. Flipped up back to neutral zone ice is Schwartz. 
Tyler Schwartz battling with it. Polifka at the line. Schwartz wins it, but the play is ruled offside. Three minutes gone by here in the opening period. Scoreless thus far between these two Suburban East Conference rivals. So for East Ridge, Matt Larson handles the forwards. And ben, ben Tharp handles the defense. You'll see that they are double shifting Grant Conan already as he came out with that third line. And a good play by Larson to make sure that he's got speed against speed when Rude's out there. Conan, one of three Eastridge captains, along with uh, Davis Polifka and Lucas Stouffer. Loose in front, Drum on the doorstep. Gavin Moss was lurking, but Drum able to save it to the corner. Good strength shown by Lucas Stouffer. And now they'll skate it out. Into the zone goes Gonzaga. Blocker to side into the left wing corner. And a whistle stops play. I thought that was going to be a whistle. I thought it went out of play. So the faceoff will indeed come down in the right circle of the park of Cottage Grove zone. Good pace so far. Very few whistles, like you said. So interesting, he's got Corkish here on the second line, so he's split up right now. Corkish is at center, so instead of it being rude, Gavin Moss and Corkich, he's now kind of go a little deeper here. So Corkich will drop back to the second line with Winuka. McCoy Winuka wins the draw, but out to center ice. Eastridge controlling. Knutson. It's tipped into the zone. Raced after by Blake Conan. Up the near side boards to Winuka. Corkish back to Winuka. On the left circle, Drum makes the save off a of side netting. Finds its way to the captain, Conan. And we've got a delayed offside, so Park's got a touch up. Gonzaga gets it in the zone. He'll go off for a change. Shots 3-0 in the early going in favor of the Wolfpack. Running around the near side boards for Blado. Backhands it to Winuka at the line. Wolfpack getting to the zone. Well defended, though, as they'll try to change on the fly. So with the speed of number four, Blake Lighty. Lighty from above the left circle, and it misses everything and then evades Jack Elliott. And Lighty's highly motivated. We talked about it. He's a Cottage Grove kid playing for East Ridge, and he's got special meaning for the game tonight. One of three on the roster. Kicked along by Jack Tauscher to the near side corner where it's picked up by Boston Widener. One of the best names you'll hear in high school hockey. Big check delivered right there by Max Kaplan. There's a shot, sharp angle. It flashes through the crease of Eastridge up the near side boards. There's a shot on target. Dr Drum makes another save. Eastridge having a difficult time clearing their zone right now. Board battle along the left half wall. Lighty leaned on there by number 20, Adam King. These board battles are going to be all important. Wyatt Bearline, or rather Kaplan, without a stick. Two sticks Battling down. for it. Yep, two pieces of lumber picked up there. Ultimately, Jack Tauscher comes away with it. Up the near side boards. Nice little play for Ricky Lanahan, and then it's stolen back in neutral zone ice. Good stick lift, though, by Lanahan. Almost six minutes in, Bill. East Ridge still with not a recorded shot on net as Park's been dominant early. Banked into the zone where Lucas gives chase. Icing's been waved off. Park just had an extended offensive zone session. It stood up initially, and then it's picked up, and here comes King. Centered across, and it's underneath his intended target stick. Back to Force at the left wing. Thrown on net. Trump makes the save and spills a small rebound, but covers and takes the whistle. Yeah, he's been good. Great start for JT Drum. I'm sure the heart's pounding, and he's settled in now like I thought he would. Pounding like a drum, no doubt. <laughs> for sure. So we talked about it. Here's the line back out. They've got number 25, Tyler Schwartz, on the wing here. So I like what Jay Moser's done. He's dropped Corkish back to the second line. That's a change from the first game, and that gives him depth. And Dustin Vogelgazang has got the same depth with Knutson and the younger Blake Conan on this line. So two good line matchups tonight, Bill. Draw one cleanly back by Park. Whistling shot goes high. Comes up for force. Brings it around. Right half wall. Held in at the right point. Flashed in front of the net and then comes up. 
to force at the left wing, and he gets hit by Muth. Absolutely run over by Brendan Muth. The Eastridge student section comes to its feet after that one as Muth throws his weight around. Yeah, we expect to see the uh, hitting and the intensity pick up as this game goes along. Now it's a puck battle in the left wing corner. Finally, one dug out by Park and Jackson Rude, but uh, Drum makes the save. And again, we'll take the whistle. Allows both teams to get a line change. Raptors keeping them to the perimeter, letting Drum see it. That's what they want to do, but now almost seven minutes in, Bill, still not a shot. East Ridge has yet to really put much of an offensive push here as Park leads 5-0 in the shots on goal. Colton Porter moves in to take the draw for Park. And the face-off circle all important. That time Eastridge wins it and is able to skate it out. Good battle, though. They're just not allowing them to really get past center oh, ice. Here comes. Puck Whip. comes up and over our heads. Wasn't sure where that was going. Bill was a, Bill was a souvenir puck. we got to get our hands up I, on that <laughs> one. That one comes up <laughs> over top of us. Those knuckle pucks, you never know where they're going to go. Folks, you can see us there on the right side of your screen. Let me tell you the truth. I made a dive for it. Bill ducked. I absolutely <laughs> ducked. I absolutely ducked. I had no idea where that was going. This face is all I've got. If you're Jay Moser, Bill, you got to be happy with this start. You're seven minutes 100%. in. And you're up 5-0 in the shots. You've dominated. They're the faster team right now to the puck. Eastridge is going to have to dig deep. Yeah, and part of it is uh, strategic. Part of it is what he's doing with his lines, dropping Corkish down and bolstering that second line to give him even more depth. Because that top line, there's no doubt about its quality. As Grant Conant, with speed, forced out of the zone, beautifully defended by Colton Porter. Eastridge able to get it in momentarily, and then the long stretch pass is iced. But uh, Porter just stood him up right at the line as Conan was trying to get into the zone. So Porter's that rare combination of size and speed. And he plays a big role for Jay Moser. You'll see him on the power play if we get one. He'll just park himself right in front of JT Drum as they move the puck around. No penalties so far. We talked about the power plays. Both of them at 28%. P penalties are going to be the difference tonight. So both these teams need to stay out of the box. Yep, special teams all important in games that are more or less similar. And actually, Eastridge technically ahead of Park in the standings. They're right next to each other in the Suburban East Conference. Eastridge 4-4, four and four, Park 4-5. Four and five. And that win, the first win, the way the Suburban East Conference has set it up this year was because not all teams were playing each other twice. Unlike the, the, what they used to. Yeah, the first game through counted for four points. So this one won't count for points for Eastridge in the overall set. The first one got four for Park, so Eastridge is actually ahead of them. But this is bragging rights, way more important than points. Thrown on net for Miller. First time he's touched the puck tonight, and he flips it over to his teammate, Tommy Lucas. Lucas's stretch pass out of the reach of King. And so we'll bring the faceoff back down into, into the Wolfpack end. 8.32 so, to go first period. So Aiden Miller gets his first shot eight minutes, 22 seconds into it. And I'm telling you, as a father of a goaltender, that's the worst thing, Want, waiting for that first shot. Generally, it's a breakaway. This time he gets a bit of a lob in. So glad to see Miller gets one in the end of the game now. Yeah, he got a softball to, uh, to open up his account as uh, Brady Knutson moves in to take the draw for Eastridge. And it's one forward right in front of the park bench. Well defended, though, by the Raptors. Swept in by Muth. Picked up by Gavin Moss in the left wing corner. Here comes Moss with speed into through the neutral zone. Great job back checking to force the turnover. And we've got a delayed offside call, or just an offside. Good play on the point there by number 18, Captain Lucas Stouffer. He's another Cottage Grove youth player and captain for the East Ridge Raptors. He's a great captain. He's lively in the dressing room. He's always positive. And he's been a great addition. And this one means something to him tonight. Yep, three, I think you said, players with Cottage Grove ties on the East Ridge ra roster. And certainly a lot of these young men know each other, having played together and against one another in the youth system. Held in at the right point. On the backhand, Trump makes the stop. It's loose, collected, and spun out of the zone by Eastridge and all the way down. 
Good play by Winuka. I don't think JT Drum knew where that puck was if we have the replay of it, but guess what? It wasn't behind him, and that's what's important. Yeah, Drum seemed to have lost it after that initial first shot by uh, Tyler Schwartz. Yeah, there you see on the replay, he thought it went behind the net, but he made the save. I think he's got an equipment problem. I think that shot might have got up and got his dangler, and he does, so. Or is it's his chest pad, so where the Velcro connects it, they're going to have to get that set up. So we'll have to get that fixed. A little assist from uh, his teammate, Zane Lanahan, who seen a little bit of time this year, but it's really been your son. It's really been Jack Hodgins. And uh, you can't underestimate or under understate how, uh, or overstate, I should say, how big a loss he is. 10-6-1 in the season, leads the conference in Goals against average and wins and save percentage, 929 save percentage. Yeah, appreciate the kind but, words, Bill. Uh, yeah. He's having a great year. He's one win away from a bunch, a whole bunch of records for for East Ridge. And, but you know what? They've got depth of goaltending like we talked about, and uh, he's on the bench cheering. And JT Drum's done a great job so far tonight. Berline loses out. Left wing corner. Picked up there by Jackson Rude. Rude. Just having an unbelievable season, an all-state season, maybe one of the more underrated players in the state. Lofted back out to center right into the path of Gavin Moss initially, but it's sent back in deep. 7-13 and counting to go, first period. Scoreless between Park and East Ridge. Beautiful move trying to walk through, and Miller forced to make a save. Park able to carry it out down the right wing. They gain the zone. This is Rude in the right wing corner. On the backhand, he's bumped off the puck. There's a shot from the point, nearly redirected in front, and that's what Park wants to do, get bodies in front of Drum's eyes. Make things difficult, and I have to imagine, Mark, that the, that the game plan is to just put pucks on net with a first-time varsity starter. Yeah, as we said, Park outshot him 44-24 in the first game, and Park's outshot their opponents by 109 shots so far this year, so they'll throw it at him. But it's very obvious East Ridge knows exactly where Jackson Root is every time, and Park knows exactly where Grant Conan is every time. So both coaches have game planned well, and the awareness is high for both defensive. Elliott in the right wing corner. Big hit delivered, and we've got a penalty coming up. No, it's icing. There are no icing. I beg your pardon. Could have been a hit. Garrett, Hank Garrett took the worst of that one. Yeah. Quarter into the zone. Good back check by Lanahan there as he comes back to break that play up. And the, Ra the Raptors are going to have to do that. They're going to have to be heavy on the F3 coming back deep. And Rick Lanahan there with a great back check. And a big check delivered. I thought it might be an elbowing co uh, called on Brandon Blado. As uh, Hank Garrett took the worst of that one, but uh, ultimately. Heavy hit by Blado. Good job by Garrett to get it out. And. This one's, going to, on. this one's going to continue to become more ferocious as the night goes on. Added forward by Caden Schwartz. Big check delivered. Thrown on net by Porter. Good save by Drum. D to D pass as they try to exit the zone. Conan with speed down the right wing. Grant Conan forced wide. Conan centers. He had a man in front just underneath his stick. Back out to center where Conan picks it up. He'll drop it back to his defender, Jack Elliott. Elliott banks it in the zone just out of the reach of Lanahan. Spun around for Max Kaplan. Raptors yeah. trying to get anything going here, finally get it towards the net. There's another good chance for Tellsher. Yeah, a couple good chances and a nice save by Miller, who was uh, near his post as the puck is iced once more. Allows both teams to get a change as we see a replay here and good offensive zone time here with uh, number 26, Brandon Muth involved. Kaplan finally able to clear, as you see, from for Park. Best four checking. Sequence of the night for the East Ridge Raptors who only have three shots on goal with 440 to go in period one. 
Brady Knutson doing the honors against Boston Widener. It's one and then hammered around the boards and out of the zone by Park. Widener, or Adam Freeman rather, picks it up behind his own net. Freeman hounded there. Now skated out. Banked in, but the icing is once again the call. 4.21 to go, first period. Shot 7-3 in favor of Park. While we're still scoreless, JT Drum has stopped all seven of the shots he's faced in his first varsity start. Yeah, he's been calm down there, and the Raptors have seemed to calm down a little bit. The first maybe eight minutes frenetic action in the East Ridge zone, but the last, five, last four and change, the Raptors have been good down deep. Big save by Miller off the draw win. Jace Olsen out there. Win the initial draw, and then the save was made by Miller. Kaplan stood up in the neutral zone by Conan. Back out to Schwartz at the left point. He tries to throw it on net, only reaches an East Ridge Raptor. They go off the glass and out of the out of the zone. Schwartz now a board battle just below our broadcast position, and now we've got a penalty coming up. Schwartz tripping Olsen. And Park will touch it up, and Olsen will spend two minutes in the box, or Schwartz, rather, will spend two minutes. So the Raptors will go to the power play. They'll drop Grant Conan back to the point on the power play. We'll see the penalty here first as Schwartz gets his stick caught up in the feet of Olsen. And so both these teams, Bill, we talked about around 28% on the power play effectiveness. So the Raptors will put Conan Back in the top of the umbrella, they'll put Blake Conan in the middle of the bumper position and try to work it from down low. Hammered and out of the zone as uh, Eastridge is 27.6% on the power play this season. Park killing off 78.3% of the penalties they've taken. Here's Conan above the right circle, shares at middle. Banked down low, just out of the reach of Lighty. Back to Conan at the right point. Goes rink wide for Lighty. He walks in and his shot hits a park defender out front. And he smacks it all the way down to the other end. Nice play by Porter and Blado there to get their bodies in the way of that shot from Blake Conan. Grant Conan goes rink wide for Lighty. And he just flips it toward Miller in net. And now Lighty will set up shop at the right wing corner. Or at the right point, I should say. Puck is in the right wing corner for Knutson. Back for Lighty. He spins it around. Grant Conan. Center slot. Hey, Miller makes the save. And unfortunately for Eastridge, Lucas Stouffer couldn't gather himself before he shot that. Big rebound opportunity there. Telsher's been hot. He's got nine on the season. Number 19, Jack Telsher, the senior. And I think five of them in those last five games. You know, you talk about Blake Conan, six goals and seven assists on the season. All six of his goals have been with the man advantage. As you see right there, Jack Tauscher, you're right, right there, but uh, could not slow himself down to get a shot on that. Gonzaga. Short-handed gets by him. There's a shorty and a save made. Good save made there by Drum. 37 seconds to go in the Raptor power play. They had a couple chances in there. Shots tightening significantly. It was at 1.5 nothing. Now 8-6 in favor of Park. 2.20 remaining first period. As you said, 35 seconds remaining on the tripping minor. Just out of the reach of King. Battle with Olsen and Eastridge recovers at their line. Gonzaga plays catch back there with his def defensive partner. Gonzaga flips it cross corner. Ten to go Grant. in the power play here for Eastridge. Lanahan gets there first. Lanahan as the penalty will expire. It's whacked out, cleared but not out. Last shot from the center from center point he is saved and beautiful centering pass on the backhand. But ultimately, Park able to flip it out as we're back to uh, even strength. Eastridge 0 for 1 on the power play tonight. And Drum decides to melt it down on the other end. Stops the clock with 1.27 to go, first period. Shots 8 6 in favor 
of Park. But as you said, I mean, Park had the first five, six shots of the game, and Eastridge has found its footy, and they've settled into this hockey game. I think some great adjustments by Coach Ben Tharp. The initial first four or five minutes, Park was kind of dancing all over the place. Now they're tightening it back up, and the space has just collapsed. There's not a lot of room for Park anymore. A nice adjustment by Matt Tharp and by Coach Larson. Tauscher tries to get it to Gar Garrett, but instead Lucas Stouffer stapled to the boards behind his own net. Park regains control at the right point. Flip down low for Rude. Dances away from Elliott. Rude stick handling up back to the point. Plays it back down low. They'll try to cycle the puck. Good job coming over by Owen Corkish. Haven't called his name too much here tonight. He's had a quiet period in the early going. Moss throws it on net, and Drum makes the comfortable save. Picked up and skated out by Elliott. He stood up by Blado, though, and they regain the puck. Blado moves to the slot, fires it, and Drum makes the save. Good save by JT Drum. That's the best one of the night as Blado came right down Main Street. And you know, you talk about Jackson. Here's a shot from Blado as he came right down and maybe even partially screened. Good save by Drum, his 10th of the night. He's been sharp. His first start, and it's been a good one for him. You know, Jackson Root in the corner. You see the move, he and Conan so similar. Their first two steps are just electric, and they just get away from traffic with it. Behind the net now, Blake Lighty able to clear the zone. Chasing after it, Brady Knutson, and he'll get there first in the right wing corner. Defended by Bladel. Knutson bumped off the puck by Burline. Gonzaga trying to ward off Rude. He'll get there, centering pass shot, Drum with a save, and that shot files, fires over the net. Great. 13 seconds left in the period. Great save by Drum there. Drum making the biggest stop of the night here as time will expire here in the opening period. Park out shoots Eastridge 12 to six in the first period here at home. But we find ourselves scoreless after one period of play thanks to J.T. Drum in his first varsity start in a Raptors sweater standing on his head. We'll be Good. back in a moment with a first half highlight, first period highlights and analysis from Cottage Grove Ice Arena. This is the South Washington County TV Hockey Classic from Cottage Grove. Did you know that 46% of homes don't have working smoke detectors? Most of these failures are from dead and disconnected batteries. The Woodbury Fire Department wants to ensure that every smoke detector is working properly, which is why we created a battery replacement program for senior citizens. All Woodbury senior citizens have to do is sign up and a member of the Woodbury EMS Fire Department will come out and replace your smoke detector batteries for you. You can sign up on the city's website or call 651-714-3600 to schedule an appointment. We want everyone to be safe, so let's all work together to make sure every home has a working smoke detector.
Hi, I'm The Cable Company. And I'm your city. Over the years, The Cable Company and I have made many financial agreements so they can continue to bring cable television to me, a resident of your city. Part of our agreement with The Cable Company allows us to use the franchise fees to create me, your local community cable channel. We provide direct communication from your city to you, the resident, in the form of city meetings, special programming, and local information you can't find anywhere else. And thanks to you, local channel, I am able to stay informed in what's happening in my city. And together with our cable company partner, we're able to provide a state-of-the-art cable system to your home. And our partnership keeps our residents engaged in their community. So thank you, your city and cable company, for providing funding so Local Channel can continue to provide me with a diversity of information that strengthens our community. Log on to learn more about what your local cable channel does for your community. This winter, be a hydrant hero and assist your fire department in digging out those hydrants. Text to 911 is available throughout Minnesota and is a great option for individuals who are deaf, hard of hearing, speech impaired, or individuals in a situation where it's unsafe to call. For example, if a crime is in progress and the caller must remain quiet to stay safe, or if the caller encounters an agitated person. To text 911, enter the numbers 911 in the To field of your messaging app. Use simple words and do not use abbreviations, emojis, pictures, or slang. Send the message and be ready to give your location and to describe the type of emergency. Answer any questions and follow instructions. Calls are preferred as information can be obtained from background noise and voice inflections. Remember, call if you can, text if you can't. Happy New Year, Woodbury! I'm Megan and here's the scoop. In an average winter, public works crews plow around 778 miles of one-lane roadway, not including cul-de-sacs. How can you help? Don't park your car on the street between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. or after a two-inch snowfall. Don't allow children to build snow forts or play adjacent to the curb. Make sure trash cans and recycling bins are well behind the curb or in the driveway. Keep sleds and toys away from the street. Shovel snow from the bottom of the driveway to the right as you're facing the street, reducing the amount of snow being placed back into the driveway during the next plowing. Clear snow from the mailbox and adopt a fire hydrant and keep snow cleared away from it. And motorists should allow at least five car lengths between their vehicle and a plow. Please give plow trucks room to work. City ordinance requires property owners with property adjacent to a public sidewalk to maintain it by clearing snow and ice within 12 hours. Be aware that sidewalks not cleared may be abated, meaning the city may hire a private contractor to clear the sidewalk at the cost of the property owner. Typically, the cost exceeds $200 and may include administrative costs as well. The city is planning to renovate and expand Central Park and is seeking input from the public through interactive workshops. The project will address the 20-year-old indoor facility's overdue maintenance needs, renovate existing spaces, and add new programming spaces. 
Have you driven past a construction site in Woodbury and wondered what they're building? Find out on the city's online development map. You can also receive an in-touch email notification when new projects are added to the map. Looking for a place to hold a graduation party, family reunion, business meeting, or celebration this year? Woodbury's outdoor park shelters are available for rent beginning January 18th. Call the Parks and Recreation Department for more information or reserve online. And that's a quick update from the City of Woodbury. Have a great day! The city of Cottage Grove is known for its cozy, small-town feel, while being only minutes away from the hustle and bustle of the Twin Cities. This winter, we invite you to our home. Whether it's making memories, exploring the unknown, or simply being together again, we know you'll find something here worth stopping by for. Did you know that 46% of homes don't have working smoke detectors? Most of these failures are from dead and disconnected batteries. The Woodbury Fire Department wants to ensure that every smoke detector is working properly, which is why we created a battery replacement program for senior citizens. All Woodbury senior citizens have to do is sign up and a member of the Woodbury EMS Fire Department will come out and replace your smoke detector batteries for you. You can sign up on the city's website or call 651-714-3600 to schedule an appointment. We want everyone to be safe, so let's all work together to make sure every home has a working smoke detector. Hi, I'm the Cable Company. And I'm your city. Over the years, the cable company and I have made many financial agreements so they can continue to bring cable television to me, a resident of your city. Part of our agreement with the cable company allows us to use the franchise fees to create me, your local community cable channel. We provide direct communication from your city to you, the resident, in the form of city meetings, special programming, and local information you can't find anywhere else. And thanks to you, local channel, I am able to stay informed in what's happening in my city. And together with our cable company partner, we're able to provide a state-of-the-art cable system to your home. And our partnership keeps our residents engaged in their community. So thank you, your city and cable company, for providing funding so local channel can continue to provide me with a diversity of information that strengthens our community. Log on to learn more about what your local cable channel does for your community. Help out our plow drivers by observing our city's winter parking regulations. This helps them clear the streets, making it easier for you to get around.
this winter, be a hydrant hero and assist your fire department in digging out those hydrants. Back here at Cottage Grove Ice Arena. Scoreless after one period of play between Eastridge and Park of Cottage Grove in a suburban East clash with the regular season winding down here in the 2022-2023 season. And uh, take a look at uh, first period highlights. And obviously in a scoreless game, it's a lot of good goaltending that's been done. As you see JT Drum in his first varsity start making some simple saves and then also making some really good saves. Right there, Aiden Miller standing on his head, but it was mostly Drum who had to stop all 12 shots he faced. And JT Drum really was the key in that first period for, for Eastridge because they got outplayed for much much of the first period. For sure. I think he did just a great job. And I know the Eastridge defense did a nice job. That last highlight in the pack there, you saw they just cleared the space out for him and let that shot from Blado come straight down Main Street. But big stage, and he's done great. I knew he would, and happy for them. You're going to keep it going. You know, the first sort of five or six minutes, Park was all over that. East Ridge defense shots on goal were 5 nothing at one point. I think the Raptors didn't get their first shot till 11.48. But a nice adjustment by Ben Tharp and Matt Larson to make that shift. And I think East Ridge was a better team in the second half, even though being outshot 12-6. Raptors uh, take the ice. And in a moment, we'll have Blythe Whaley with the head coach of East Ridge get his thoughts on the first period. But... Uh, it's a crazy atmosphere here. Two teams that share the same arena. The park band is in, in the house, and that's always a good time as it's a sold-out affair here tonight in the game that started at 8 o'clock. The JV game was 4-3 overtime in favor of Park. And uh, it should be an interesting, uh, interesting game. Both teams ready to go and uh, our flight Whaley is with Raptors head coach Dustin Vogelgesang. The first thing that I want to ask you is of course after the first period you guys coming out of it still with this clean slate after not being able to start your goalie tonight what does that look like for you and how proud are you of you or your team? Yeah we started off okay uh, JT made some really nice saves for us there uh, especially late in the period there we just got to get going we got to move the puck a little bit quicker support each other a little bit better on the uh, in the D zone, and we should get out, get out of the zone a little cleaner, hopefully. Yeah, what was the atmosphere there in the locker room? How do you guys get revved up before coming back here in the second? It's very easy to get revved up for this one, so I don't have to say much, just a couple technical things and fix them and then let the kids go. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate you. it. And we thank Blythe and Coach Vogelgesang for taking some time as the two teams flip sides of the ice. Take a look at JT Drum, the junior in his first varsity start and he has settled in he saw a lot of pucks in that first period and yeah talk about what you what you've heard from the head coach there the zone entries maybe not as clean as or exits I rather not as clean as he would have hoped sure very similar to the first game we talked about at 44 22 I think the shots were in the, the first game 12 6 again part doubles it back up but you know he just wants to make sure the defense is going to be strong in his own zone protect the goalie drums settled in now he's doing a great job and wants to make sure his team doesn't make any mistakes deep. Lead watch by Lighty, now picked up by Tyler Schwartz. Schwartz evades a couple defenders, tries to get it back out. It's underneath the stick of Blato, and all the way down where it'll be played by Miller. Intercepted by Knutson, well read there. Now picked up and carried on out by Moss. Moss will backhand it up for Caden Schwartz, who rings it around. Up the near side boards, held in at the right point by Blado momentarily. Now Blado back at his own line. Snaps a pass right to the line where it's sucked in the zone by Winuka. Taken back by the Raptors. From the right point, Freeman, and Drum turns it aside. you got to be wary of those blasts from the point. Yeah, that one 
Didn't look too comfortable. Freeman down low. It's in the slot. Raptors trying to clear. Rude takes it away. He walks the zone and drops it back in the right wing corner. Nice job by Little Eastridge Kevin keeping Joe. him to the perimeter there. And now Rude takes a big dump in front. Rude and Moss trying to execute a little give and go, but uh, ultimately Eastridge able to get it down and get a change. Now they'll set up the four check as they try to keep him in their own end. Root spinning away from the pressure of Lanahan. Plays it to the near side for Freeman. Wanutka tries to get there. He pokes at it. It's just out of the reach of uh, Colton Porter. That's a tall reach, right? At six foot five. He's a big man. To the near side, or the far side, rather, for Lighty. He's been in back, involved in a lot of the play. Drum wise to it off the boards. Some of those boards can be pretty lively. They are. Be live to it as a, as a goalie. We saw in the JV game a couple of times the puck came in and came out the other side quickly. The goalies have to be aware of it. But Shots three nothing in this period in favor of Park. So nothing, more of the same of what we saw in the first. Yeah, nothing too heavy. A couple of dump ins on JT. He's been done a nice job. Both these coaches have prepared these teams very well. They've very aware of who's on the ice. Conan and Rude have both been kind of muted already. Both these teams are well prepared for tonight's game. Yep, no doubt about it as Eastridge has a potential two on one. The speed of Conan gets to the front and Miller makes the save. Elliott tries to clear. It's finally carried out by Corkish and then poked back. You saw right there the dynamism of Grant Conan. Drove the net and then was denied by Miller. Now it's Eastridge. He'll flip it cross corner, trying to get Brady Knudsen on it. He shoved off the puck by Bladel, and we've got a whistle and a stoppage as the puck is melted down by Miller. Big save by Aiden Miller. His best of the game on Eastridge's best opportunity. And Neri Seabill, I talked about it, both Grant Conan and Jackson Rude. That first couple of steps, it's just so quick. And that's the difference between an average player and a great player. And you saw Conan right around the defense with two quick steps and in on loan on Miller. Zaga can't hold the zone. On to by number 27, Winuka. His pass driven down. Still in the possession of Park. Forced wide. They able to hold the zone. Nice job by Owen Corkish to carry it. Winuka spins it down low, trying to get Corkish onto it. Gonzaga bothering him. Extended zone time once more for Park. Through traffic, Beerline, or Burline rather, has his effort saved. Now back out to the point. New side for Burline. He snaps off a wrister. Great. Drum saw it on the way. Great job by Chase Olson if we get the replay of that. Again, they're letting Drum see it, and that's exactly what you need to do here. So Drum just ties his guy up, or sorry, Olson. You see him to the left hand side of the screen there. Absolutely A plus job by Chase Olson. And Drum, easy save for him from that far out. He'll make them all day if they shoot him from there. Yeah, they were trying to get the screen in front to take Drum's eyes away. And Olsen, as you said, did a nice job of forcing the attacker away. And Olsen saw that one cleanly. Eastridge now trying to clear their zone. Pocket picked. There's a sharp angle shot. Another shot from Boston Widener that's saved by Drum. Again, Park recycles the puck. Off the wall, it's in front. Wraparound attempt, missed. Picked up finally by Lucas Stouffer. Picked up by Grant Conan. He stood up at the line by Bladel. Conan still on it. What strength by him to maintain the possession of the puck. Caden Schwartz in the right wing corner battling two Raptors. Eastridge wins it back. Conan fires it, and a save is made, I believe with the shoulder of Miller. Big save by Miller there. Conan's one-timer had top shelf all over it. Absolutely. That was a rifle. The best save of the game for Miller. Two now a chance here. Jack Tauscher moves in, shoots, and the save is made. What a save again by Miller. 30 seconds. His two best saves of the night. He's been sharp here. He has stopped nine chances, and the last couple have been of high quality. Big check delivered in the left wing corner. There's a shot. By Brady Knudsen, it comes up the near far side boards. Delayed offside, and finally offside is the call. A flurry of activity 
and the best chance of the, of the game for the Raptors. So shots on goal 18 10 but there you see the save by Miller you know Bill you gotta say his 10 have been higher quality than what Parks had on, on JT Drum so Miller with 10 saves and a lot of them high high quality saves. And how about that one that we didn't see that one timer by uh, Conan by Grant Conan off his shoulder from the slot. That one was wicked. Pass across just underneath a sliding Blake Conan. Backhanded for Moss who gets in the zone. Gavin Moss ridden off the puck by Brady Knudsen. At the line, Booth loses the puck. You get it in, and then it's taken back. Schwartz unable to hold the zone, in the neutral zone now at the line, and it's deflected up and out into the Raptors bench. These two teams are so similar and so even in terms of how they play here. I mean, both teams again so well coached. That you know, Jackson Root there on that line, they can't break the zone, they just trap it back in and the Raptors with two or three great chances here in period number two. I mean, you can just feel it in this place, Bill. The first goal is going to blow the roof off this joint. <laughs> no doubt about it as Dustin Vogel is saying, looking on. Eastridge wins the draw and backs, backhands it in deep. Big check delivered by Colton Porter. Not an inch of these 200-foot ice is being given in this uh, Fraught rivalry along the left half wall, cycled down low. Porter will get there first. Bring it up the far side boards for Wanuka. They're able to force it in deep. Jack Elliott will get there first for Eastridge. His pass intercepted and then carried in by Corkish. Corkish goes back up for Berline. He walks in, fires a shot, and Drum makes the save. And another, I believe it was out, out of bounds. Another of great job by Lucas Stouffer in front. So we talked about them clearing the zone for JT Drum, and if they want to shoot her from the blue line, shoot it all day long, because there you'll see Lucas Stouffer in front of the net. He just manhandles the man in front. There you go, and see the shot was clear. Good save by Drum there. But a good job by Stouffer again. That's the second or third time we've seen the Raptors do a great job in defensive zone protection. And that's something that they've been working on all year. The right wing corner and then cleared by Eastridge. The race is on. Who will get there first? Lanahan able to. Centered. Net is knocked off its moorings. And now we've got some extracurriculars behind the net. As Lanahan tied up with uh, Braden Weeza. Great effort by Lanahan as he went into the corner there, dug it in, got there first. Lucky he didn't he come into there injured, but yeah. good effort by number 27 as he beat him to the puck. Well, it was like Coach Vogel was saying, told Blythe before the second period. He doesn't have to say much to get these kids fired up for a game like tonight. For sure. 19-10 shots in favor of Park. 10.05 to go second period. The net's, the, the net's off again. I'm not sure they see it yet. They really don't. Play continues. It's way off now. Yeah, he's got to blow that down. Yep. So we'll take the draw once more in the park end. East Ridge has had some impressive spells, and they've had some golden opportunities. But 19-10, as I said, 19-10 are the shots. It doesn't feel like that. No. Like Eastridge has been strong here. But again, the Raptors are doing a great job on the perimeter. All the shots coming in on JT Drum are coming in from way out, and he's handled them, no problem. Guido, the Moss, good zone exit to Root. Cross-ice pass, picked off and intercepted by Davis Polifka. Really called his name tonight, one of three co-captains on this Team up for Lanahan. Lanahan ridden off the puck by Bladel. Nice play by Bladel there to use leverage on Lanahan. That time he wins the battle between those two. Bladel behind his own net. Left wing corner. Moss. Rude takes it away from him. Rude so hard to get him off the puck. And he'll Fire it up ahead to the line where it's tipped in. Well, tried to be tipped in and 
Ultimately, the play is ruled offside. Tyler Schwartz unable to get a stick to it. Stops the clock with 9.02 to go, second period. Raptors just, as I said, well aware of where Jackson Root is there. They just let him press, nowhere to go. He has to throw that waste high saucer pass. And, and, it go, and it goes for icing. And part of the coaching with these, they, they do know each other so well, so they know how to negate the other team's talent. And we've seen that so far. Great angle play, though, as that is turned over to Porter, and he whistles his shot high. Goes and chases his own loose shot in the left half wall. Sharp angle shot saved by Drum. That might have been actually off the side of the post. They go off the window and out to center ice. And the play is ruled offside. We've seen a lot of offsides tonight, but Porter dangerous when you when he gets in open ice. So interesting lineup change there for the East Ridge Raptors. That time they bring Brady Knutson up. That's the power play unit, the two Conan brothers and Knutson. So they've been having Rick Lanahan or Jack Telsher with Conan and Conan. That time they put Knutson with them. So a little line juggle there from Coach Dustin Vogel is in. Thank Garrett. Loses out, and the puck is stolen away. Cross-size pass finds its way to Colton Porter. This is the match I talked about, Bill. This is line number two against line number three, and it's tough for East Ridge, and I think they're going to get a penalty out of it. Indeed they will, as big check was delivered. And it looks like uh, Hank Garrett is the guilty party, as you see Garrett throwing Porter into the boards right at center ice and uh, a clear penalty first of the night first taken by Eastridge so the Wolfpack go to the power play they have a little bit different power play here you're going to see oh, you're going to see Porter just set himself up right in the middle there off the post that close there's another shot and a save from Drum great break for the Raptors as Rude hits the post and then Drum makes the save and Rude, head drum beat, but the post keeps it out. Good. There's another shot, and that time drum was square to it, so. Good job to react to it. But you'll see Porter get right in front of the net. That shot blocked down this time by Lanahan, and he goes and chases after it. In case you're wondering, Eastridge 81.8% penalty kill this season. Park 28.6% on the power play. Tyler Schwartz at the right point. Cross ice pass on the left top, back to the center point. Near side for Rude, snaps a pass down low, just out of the reach of Drum. Drum makes this first stop, second save, and covers the puck. Nice vision as Moss came in the back door there. Rude found him, he threw that pass through about five players right on the tape of Gavin Moss. Right there you see it, and Moss just wasn't able to handle it. And a good play by both Stouffer and by JT Drum to cover it back up. And where was Porter but right in front, just as you talked about. He's going right back to it again. Draw one back, shared near side for Tyler Schwartz. Rude quarterbacking this power play. Plays catch. Sharp angle shot, and they score! Park of Cottage Grove scores on the power play, and they strike first. As you see, Rude finds Gavin Moss, and he sneaks it past Drum with a screen of Porter helping in front for Moss. Goal number 19 of the season, his fourth power play goal this year. I love the power play set up with Porter in the middle. It's always the way, right? JT Drum's been so solid, and then that one from a tough angle gets in to beat him. He's got to recover. He's been good so far, but that's probably one he wants back. The building's alive now, Bill. There's a Wolfpack and home ice open up the scoring. And again, we talked about the trio from Park and the trio from East Ridge, and so far, Park leads that one one nothing. The Raptors need an answer here. And most likely number 11 is gonna have it. They do indeed, one nothing. And in case you heard the 
public address announcer. It was Moss from Porkish and Rude. There's a big save made by Miller. Loose puck. It's off the top of the net. How about Miller? Miller takes it off the head on purpose. He headbutts it forward. I haven't seen that for a long time. Wow. Banked back into the zone. Can't wait to see a replay of that one. If we can but get that it. power play goal, the first penalty taken of the game by Eastridge. And now here's a chance for the Raptors. Conan save made by Miller. Miller's made four or five good saves already. He's only had 12 shots, but they've been higher quality than the Eastridge 23. Now another chance as Korkish fires one and misses the net. Comes up the far side boards. Backhanded in by Fries. Now it's Korkish again controlling. Near side for Berline. Korkish snaps one after a toe drag. There was traffic in front. Somehow Drum saw it through the screen of Kaplan as we see the headbutt here. The floating puck and hey, whatever keeps it out, right? That's what uh, that's they say. A, that is a gutsy play. If that one goes off the wrong side of the lid, it goes behind him. He doesn't that's want a, it. But That's a bad goal to give up. But that's it, gutsy play and you got a highlight yeah. out of it. So yeah. the game's opening up right now and I think that's the game Park wants to play. I don't think that's the game Eastridge wants to play right now is if it gets a little bit wild out there, free for all, I don't think that's the way Eastridge is coming into this game. So we'll have to see what the next couple 544 bring. Yeah, I'm sure they want to get into a shootout with this Park team that averages four and a half goals a game. They're out shooting Eastridge at the moment, 24 to 12. Pope checked free by Knudsen as Moss recovers it. Back at the line, Eastridge throws it toward Miller and he turns it aside. 521 and counting to go in the second as it's hammered around and forced out of the zone by Tyler Schwartz. Schwartz tied up initially with Conan. Stouffer gets it in deep. Up the far side boards for Tyler Schwartz. He's been everywhere tonight, Schwartz has. And Eastridge will try to change on the fly as the puck's forced in deep. Moss is on it, Rude steals it away. Rude trying to find Schwartz and it's knocked free. Take it back, two on two for the Raptors as they gain the zone. In front, Conan was driving the net. He put himself in the right position, but the whistle stops play. And Lighty and Conan trying to hook up on the connection there. And just look at the speedy Conan getting to the front of the net. And he had beaten Berline to it, but ultimately could not connect. Good rush, and you see there the high hockey IQ from Conan. Exactly what F2 is supposed to do, right to the far right post. He drives the defensive back there. The Raptors that close to tying this one up. Draw one initially by the Raptors, and now Porter gains the zone. He turns it, shoots, and Drum turns it aside to the corner. Comfortable save for JT Drum, who's saved 24 of 25 shots he's faced tonight. And he sees another one as Porkish was bearing down on his net. And that so top line, right? Because we talked about Moss gets the goal, Korkish the assist, and uh, and Rude gets uh, gets another assist, and it's that it's that those big sophomores we talked about in the preview. I like what East Ridge is doing, though. I mean, they only have 12 shots. I mean, the shots keep rolling up on JT Drum, but Bill, I don't think there's been one or two really good chances for Park other than the goal they scored, and they've got 13 shots in the period. They're all from the outside, or they're all dump-ins. That's exactly what East Ridge wants. They can put 60 on that. That's fine. Keep going. That's what they want. Yeah, I mean, there, there's certainly that's certainly a conversation. It's a great point, Mark. The quality of chances as Linehan gains the zone. He'll chip and chase. I think Miller's been super sharp, and I think the Raptors at period two have had the better chances. They just can't get one by him. Oh. Flipped ahead, and now a chance for Winutka. Shoots, and a big save made by Drum. He shut the five hole and stopped it. That's a huge save at one nothing. JT Drum makes a great breakaway save as Winuka came in and that's a big one. Two nothing's a big gap here. Beautiful stop Winuka. He got the left pad to it as you see. The icing brings it back down. 27-12 now shots in case you're curious for the period. It's 15 to six in favor of Park as 
And I think the Raptors have had better scoring chances. That was a great one for Winuka, but overall it's probably three or four each for good scoring chances, and the shots are way lopsided. Would you consider their goal a greasy goal or, or no? Because, I mean, it's I think, one that Drum might want back because yeah, it was I a think, sharp angle shot. I think he's made some saves that should have been goals, but that one probably he wants back when that breakaway saves A+. plus. He's done great tonight. Marvelous job in their big stage. Yeah. And first time in the net, and he's been great. But Faced almost 30 shots through two periods of play, and he's this is only exactly, let one in. He's keeping his team in the game. He sure is. This is almost exactly the way it went last time, Bill. I think I said it was 34-14 after two periods. 2-1 Park lead is shaping up exactly the same as the last time, so very Center, similar. Centering pass intercepted, and Conan, the Conan brothers try to play catch, and the speed of Grant Conan earns a penalty for Eastridge. And now he's got a player going down behind as Brendan Bladel Conan, finds himself in the back of the net. And, and Conan took the penalty. Frustration. Oh, that's... Grant Conan earns the penalty and then commits the penalty as you see Bladel takes him down. And then he must have given him a two-handed shove. I don't, I mean, I guess. Can't do that, but uh, tough, ultimately. Tough call, but Conan showing the frustration and. So coincidental minors? Coincidental minors will play yeah. five on five, but. You know, from a part point of view, they when they see Conan do that, whether it was penalty worthy or not, they're doing what they want to do. They want 11 off his game. Right, exactly. Knudsen has his pocket picked by Lucas. Knudsen gets it back. Rude. Big blast from the right point. Comes up the near side boards, held in by Stouffer. Banked off the, out of the zone. And now Rude bearing down on the net. Good awareness by Drum. There's a shot and they score! Drum had to come out initially. And he could not get back in his net in time. And just like that, it's 2-0 Park. Goal number two of the game for Gavin Moss. Let's watch the replay here. Drummed, good play by Rude. Drum didn't get a lot on it, and then Stouffer not able to tie up his man. That's got to be tied up back there. As, J as JT drums out in the middle of nowhere's land, and Lucas Stouffer not able to get a hold of his man, and that's a tough goal late in period number two. It was thrown on net, and Moss redirects it in, driving the net. And it was Tyler Schwartz off the wall throwing it on the net. I think big play by Rude, good save by Drum, good save there on a tip shot. That's a big save by JT Drum. That one could have been in the net too. The play by, by, by Rude though comes in. Rude just gets a piece of JT Drum stick on the clearing pass. He doesn't get enough on it. And that affords the play to go backwards. So small things by Jackson Rude end up in big things in a goal for the Park Cottage Grove Wolfpack. Yeah, he kept it alive. And then off the wall, Schwartz just threw it on net. And Moss, who was uh, hard charging, was able to redirect it in for his second goal of the period. And uh, that is a killer of a goal to give up for Eastridge with just two minutes and six seconds left here before our second intermission. And right. that, is, uh, that is maybe the mistake of a goalie that you know, is making his first varsity yeah, start. I it's hard to say. I gotta it's a give, judgment call. I got to give the credit to Rude, though. I mean, Rude hustles in on the play, and he gets a piece of the stick on the clearing play, but that play's behind. It's The defenseman's got to pick up that man coming back through when his goalie's out. Just a series of sort of bad breaks, but all started by Jackson Root. Yeah, the hustle of the top player for this park team nearing 50 points on the season 20 goals and 29 assists now for jackson rude and tyler schwartz meanwhile picking up his 10th helper of the season assisting on that last goal freeman flips it off the end boards and he'll set up back at his blue line <laughs> up ahead there's the shot that's driven down off the stick of winutka 
Now picked up in the right wing corner by the Raptors. 121 to go, second period. South Washington County TV Hockey Classic. Park out shooting the Raptors 29 to 12. The Raptors could need to get one here, Bill. They don't come back well. They've Most of their wins, if you look at them, they've jumped out to a lead and they've just held down the fort. A good goal setting and a defensive piece. They don't come back well. Good save by Drum there, though. Yep, Corkish with a big blast that uh, Drum saves. Flipped out to center ice. Rude rings oh, it around. An break. Another bad break off the end boards. Luckily for Eastridge, they're able to clear it. Fortunate. And then no, nothing further came from it. Beautiful drop pass by Blake Conan, and then it's intercepted by who else but Rude. Rude trouble. gains the line. He walks his way to the front. Shot. Drum makes the save. Another save, and now fisticuffs in front. Drum covers the puck, and now we've got some extras as Jackson Rude was getting in the kitchen of JT Drum. And the captain's just doing what captains are supposed to do. So now, now Park's going to take a penalty there, unadvised penalty back there. That's Jackson Rude, and we talked about the frustration of Grant Conan. You're seeing it now with Jackson Rude. He's going to go for two here. He just didn't get a lot on it. Good play by Wyden to get back. So Drum doesn't have to make the save really because Wyden breaks it back up. And now you see Rude. He's just getting frustrated. And actually, a good play by Wyden. He knows how valuable number ten is, and if he's in the box, he can't score. Indeed, so Jackson Rude sits. And that right, that right there, probably the penalty. 30.4 seconds remaining, so the Raptors will finish the period on a power play and start the next period on the power play. It's eerily how similar this game is to the first one, Bill. 32-12 shots on goal. It was 34-14 the last Something meeting. like that, 34-14-15, something like that. 2-1, though, it was again in two periods, and Park just broke it back open. So, But again, I think Eastridge, they haven't scored yet, but they've had four or five great A opportunities here in the period. I would say if you look at the body of work for the game, Miller's got 12 saves, but he's been outstanding for the four for the 12 saves and now drums made the same amount the other end but parks just throwing the puck at the net they can do that all night eastridge won't mind it it's just those one-on-one two-on-ones that eastridge has to to stop coming back in but this game's been even two nothing two minutes for roughing the aptly named jackson mood and now we got coincidental minors as cole widens in the box so no power play after all for Eastridge. So uh, usually you know, they very often don't get the instigator, but they get Cole Wyden in this instance. Does take Root off the ice, but one more chance potentially here. Centering pass picked up oh, initially just behind Lanahan. Moss instead carries it on back. He throws it to the front. Schwartz makes the save, and then Lanahan or uh, rather Moss tries to follow it up with just eight and a half seconds left. Shots now 33 to 12 in favor of Park. And Bill, we said in the pregame that the Raptors have been outshot by 220 shots so far. And this is a bit more than normal, but this is not dissimilar. But again, the shot count doesn't matter. I mean, they're doing a good job of keeping it for the most part of the perimeter. And JT Drum's been rock solid in that. And the Raptors still very much in this one. They're one bounce away, but the next goal is huge. As we get ready to get to the second period intermission, the Raptors need the first goal of period number three. Yeah, you would not know how much Park has dominated this contest, but you're right. Eastridge has had some golden opportunities of their own, so credit where it's due. Aiden Miller has been outstanding as well. Miller, some sparkling numbers, 5-2 and two coming in, a 1.60 goals against average and a 9.34 save percentage as time expires here in the second period park of cottage grove gets on the board first or twice in that period gavin moss once on the power play and once even strength and we go to our second intermission with park leading eastridge here at home two nothing this is the swc tc tv hockey classic
Hi, I'm the Cable Company. And I'm Air City. Over the years, the Cable Company and I have made agreements to give them access to my streets so they can provide a state-of-the-art cable system to... Me, a resident of your city. That's right. And in return for those agreements, Cable Company provides funding that I can use for many critical things, such as... Me, your local community cable channel. I connect the city to every resident. As access to local newspapers have dwindled, I'm one of the few sources for local information, like city and school board meetings, local events, special programming, and local information you can't find anywhere else. And the funding and local channels that we receive in return for our agreement with Cable Company are so important in keeping my residents informed and engaged. It's a fantastic way for local residents to stay in touch with their community. So thank you, your city and Cable Company, for providing funding for local channel and for providing me with the diversity of information that strengthens our community. Log on to learn more about what your local cable channel does for your community. Shall we play a game? South Washington County Telecommunications Commission. South Washington County Telecommunications... What? South Washington County Telecommunications Commission. Wait. Commission. <laughs> Say my name. South Washington County Telecommission Communication. South Washington County Telecommunications Commission. <laughs> it's too long. South Washington County Telecommunications Commission. There we go. South Washington County Telecommunications Commission. Back here at Cottage Grove Ice Arena, where our score after two periods of play, 2-0. Park leading East Ridge and Blythe Whaley is down on the sidelines with head coach Jay Mosier. Your team had to be sitting in this game scoreless till partway through that second period. Now you get to come into the third with a two-goal lead. How relieved are you, first of all? But also, what, what changes in the game plan, maybe, when you have this lead going into the third? Well, it's always good to have a lead, but uh, I don't feel too much relief yet. We're going to stay on the gas, and uh, I don't like... I don't like getting conservative and, and uh, giving the other team momentum. We're going to try to keep it in our, uh, in our favor. Rightfully so, pedal to the metal. But when you think about this game, we obviously saw it right there at the end of the second period that maybe some of these guys starting to lose maybe that level-headedness. How do you help your guys keep calm and finish out this game? And how important is that going to be to finish and be the winner? Well, just reminding them that composure, um, at the end of the day, we have to be composed. Uh, you start uh, losing your cool and you start taking penalties and you know power plays can uh, change a game uh, very very quickly so uh, we'll see if they they uh, you know listen to me or not <laughs> thanks so much coach appreciate your time right. thank you and we thank life and coach Moser for a few minutes and uh, as we take a look at uh, second period highlights and uh, there were plenty for park as uh, they got a couple goals initial saves though Aiden Miller coming up and uh, some great chances in that second period for Eastridge, but ultimately uh, it was a big save. And then Gavin Moss here gets the scoring started on the power play, sneaking one through Drum on the power play from a sharp angle. And then right here, the hustle of Jackson Rude. Schwartz throws it in front, and Moss redirects it in. But uh, shots of 33-12 in this game. Mark Hodgins, but doesn't really tell the story of the game, does it? Well, it doesn't. I mean, the highlight package showed it very well. So the one shot that we did get a JT drum, he very calm and cool and collected, handled that shot from 50 feet out, but it was straight in, and the team did a good job clearing it out. The other two we see on Aiden Miller are breakaways right in on him. So you know, by my count, the high, what I call high danger shots, so shots that are inside the hash marks and in, it's 6-5 in favor of Eastridge. And so I think at the end of the day, the Raptors are doing a great job of keeping the puck to the perimeter. They don't mind all the shots. It's very eerily similar, though, Bill, to the last game. Very, very close. It was 2-1 after 
two. This one's two nothing. I'm telling you, the next the next goal wins it. If East Ridge gets on the board, they get the momentum. If Park gets goal number three, it's a big hole. Park continuing to uh, put its foot on the gas. They do not want to let the Raptors back in this hockey game. They know how dangerous they are. And uh, the Wolfpack scoring three goals in the opening matchup. After they had a 2-1 lead, they ended up winning 5-1 and pulling away in the third period. As we are underway here in this third period of play, 30 seconds gone by, and Park has camped out now in the East Ridge end. Raptors trying to clear. Winutka throws it on net. And JT Drum comes out and gloves it. Drum has saved 32 of the 34 shots he's faced tonight. Good play by JT Drum. That one's going wide. They still give him a shot for it. It wasn't going to go in, but his team needed a whistle. And we talked about smart play, high hockey IQ. Drum with a smart play to snag that one and get that whistle. Faceoff comes to his right. One by the Raptors and banked out of the zone. And we'll do it again. And so, Bill, we talked about for East Ridge right here. You know, it's interesting. We talked about eliminating Jackson Rood for Park, eliminating Grant Conan for East Ridge right now. And right now, Park's done that. You know, Conan gets that penalty. Rood gets that penalty. Coach Jay Moser says we got to keep composure. And two of the best players have already got retaliation penalties. Jay Moser all about composure. As the delayed offside forces Park to touch up. And allows... Lucas Stouffer to collect and try to play it on out. Another another line shift here for East Ridge. This time they've got Muth, Telsher, and Lanahan out. This is generally where Grant Conan would play. So we'll see what Coach Dustin Vogelgang has got up his sleeve. Great pass up to Kaplan. His shot save on the left pad. The rebound spilled out to a dangerous spot. It's loose in front. And the wraparound attempt is put home. Goal scored by Boston Widener. Widener was there, and the short side was left gaping, and Widener stuffed it home. It's 3-0 Park. That is a huge goal. You see the rebound here. It was a juicy one. Widener threw it on net. He stayed after it. The puck was lost, and he was the first one to react. And Mark, how often is that the case? The first player to react. I don't think JT knew where it was ever. No. He was just looking for it, searching, yep. and out it came. For two, it has bounced to Widener, and that's a huge goal for the punt. Still not up on the scoreboard, but I'm pretty sure that'll quote count. And uh, you said next goal wins. We'll see if that's the case. As I said, the Raptors have lots of scoring power, but if you look at their 10 wins on the season, they do very well when they jump out early. And they struggle to come from behind, but they're going to have to do it tonight. And this is where you lean on number 11. And watch Grant Conan. He'll try to put this team on his back. Widener from Max Kaplan and Adam Freeman. An even strength goal. About a minute 30 into this third period. And it's a 3-0 lead now. 39 shots on goal now for Park. And... Uh, yeah, that JT drum, you can tell, he just wasn't sure exactly where it was, and Boston Widener got there first. There's a sharp angle shot from Rude, saved by Drum. Good save there, too. He came out, cut the angle right off of Jackson Rude, who likes to shoot it from tough angles. Yeah, he is, he is an ultimate confidence player, and one of the reasons he will likely be drafted in the juniors next year. Gonzaga fires it in deep. Left there for Elliott. Nearly lost it. Good pressure applied there by Knutson. Cross ice pass as Park regains the zone with Rude. He's bodied off the puck by Elliott. Up to the right point and then played down low by Caden Schwartz. Gonzaga will get there first in the left wing corner and find, make pass to Grant Conan. Conan with speed through center ice. He works to the outside. Conan on the backhand loses it to the end boards. And ultimately nothing comes out of it. Now Conan tied up. There's a shot on net. Miller turns it aside to the near side boards. And it's floated out to center ice. Off to the far side boards. Elliott trying to get there first. Hounded by Moss who's on a hat trick. Center's back looking for Rude. Intercepted nicely there by Tauscher. 
He skates and regains the zone. Tauscher drives the net. Turns aside. Nice, nice defense there by Berline. There's a wraparound attempt. Miller makes the save to deny Muth, and then he covers the loose puck. Good drive by Telsher and then by Muth. But behind the play, earlier on in that play, Brendan Bladel tied up Grant Conan back in the corner, and Conan threw him to the ground. Fortunate to not get a penalty, and as I said, you know, going off the second period, they were poking at Conan. I think they're under his skin right now. Number 11 needs to shake it off. Oh, beautiful. Pass trying to find uh, Lanahan, but ultimately nothing comes of it. Near side for Winutka. Now he's in a board battle on the left half wall. The Raptors have to be careful here not to let the frustration of the third goal bother them. Tons of time left here, but you don't want to go shorthanded here with 13 to go in period number three. Mark of Cottage Grove one for one on the power play tonight. 39-13, shots in favor, three to one. Shots in favor for Park here. They'll be hosting Hastings next, just two regular season games remaining for the Wolfpack as it's pitchforked out to center ice. Winutka tries to send it in. Elliott two at first. Potter said kind of a quiet game, Freeman. Plays it in and then sets up the forecheck as a couple new skaters hop on the ice for the Wolfpack. 12.20 to go here in regulation. It's gloved down on the clearance. That's difficult, high degree of difficulty for Widener to keep the zone. Lucas gloves it down at the left half wall. Great centering pass, slap shot, and they Drum either got a glove to no, it or it hit the, the post. Hit the crossbar. Okay. Came down. Raptors fortunate. Very often you hear that. This time Drum does get a glove to it, but you could tell he was beaten. What a shot from Adam King, who was looking for goal number nine, as you'll see there here. You'll see right off the crossbar oh, yeah. and out. So Raptors with life. Bill, you might have seen it there. If we can go back and check that last breakout, not really a highlight package, but the Raptors put all three forwards on the Park Cottage Grove blue line. They've been having trouble getting out of this four check there, so they try to go. You know, two on three coming back out. Jackson Root picks the pocket and almost backfires on him. Root in there trying to win the draw. He'll track it down to the right circle. Drum makes the save, spills the rebound. It's flipped and missed the net. Open net. Fortunate there. Open oh, net for man. Schwartz. Tyler Schwartz already with an assist. Thought he could get a goal. Should have had that one wide open yeah. net. And again, the Raptors fortunate. A crossbar and an open net. As you see, Schwartz will pounce on it. Drum tries to push it out, but. He just fought it again. JT's fighting it right now a little bit, like the last goal in that one. Schwartz has a chance. The Raptors are take that. Into the zone goes Bladel. Drops it back for Rude, shoots, and Drum makes the save. Big collision as the two go into the end boards with uh, Blake Lighty. That was a very good save by Drum. He comes back out and challenges Rude, and no rebound. That was a point blank effort from Rude, and that time, yeah, Drum makes the save, keeps his shoulders square to it. No rebound, too. And good. no rebound is most important. Good save by Drum. Rude and Tauscher, one back cleanly by Park. They hold the zone at the right point. It's a park attacker in front. Try a little give and go with Polifka. Raptors having a difficult time clearing their zone at the moment. Finally get it out and all the way down. Big check delivered on Lanahan and we've got a penalty coming up. And I'm not sure if it's gonna be on Bladel or who? Looks like Schwartz is going to get the game. Yeah. When you see here, really lined him up, and he got there first with the heavy hit. It's going to be Bladel. You had it. Oh, it is Bladel. See, this is why I got to trust myself, Mark. Jay Moser is not happy about it. As you can see him on the park bench, he's given an earful. And Bladel's confused. One of the rare senior on this park squad, a team led by sophomores, but they put Eastridge on the power play. Raptors 0 for 2 there tonight. Long way to go. The Raptors need to cash one on this power play if they're going to get back in it. 
Grant Cohen. Two minutes for roughing. Blado goes. His second penalty of the game. Thought it went out of the zone, but no call. The student section wanted it anyway. Newton plays it down low. Aggressive kill as Grant Cohen back to Knutson. Passes it back for Lighty. Knutson stable to the boards by Colton Porter. Oh, they've got Lighty in front, but they missed him with the pass, and it's banked out of the zone. And Grant Cohen has to go back and collect it. Cohen with speed regains the zone. Cohen drives in the net. Backhanded attempt. Miller makes the save. The bounding puck is corralled by his defenseman and banked out of the zone. And there you see the speed and electricity of Oof. Grant Conan. He just got that step right around and almost opened the scoring for the Raptors. It wasn't like it was hard to understand what he was doing, but once he got ahead of steam, there was no stopping him, and he got right to the front. He's going to try to do it again. Down the right wing. Circles behind. Centers out in front, trying to find his brother. And now we've got a whistle and a stoppage. As maybe the net's been knocked off. Net yep, is off. Exactly. Blake Cohen. Here you see Cohen oh. come back in. Backhanded attempt though, and Miller Stay wasn't run, didn't know much about it, but uh, right there, and Colton Porter helped out as well. Very aggressive penalty kill by Park. They're taking it deep into the corner, into behind the net. The way the Raptors beat that is, is you got to go across what they call the Royal Road between the dots. You got to throw it horizontally and throw it quick, that's how you're going to beat this penalty kill. There's Timber on the ice as King loses his stick. This penalty kill forces you to keep it on the perimeter, and the way you beat it is just like that. You've got to throw it across and make a move. Through traffic, all oh, this net was loose, but uh, the net was open, but they couldn't convert. Gonzaga knocks it down at the point, and then it's flung down the ice. 16 seconds remaining on the roughing minor. 9-10 to go in the hockey game. 3-0 our score. Park looking to win four in a row and make it 15-7 on the season. And that'll do it. Three for three, the kill tonight for Park as Drum wisely decides to melt it down. That's a big kill for the Park Wolfpack. Good chance by Conan, but really only one. A couple of times they buzzed by, but Miller stands tall. And again, the uh, quality of shots, only 15 by the Raptors, but they've had six or seven high quality shots. 43-15 shots in favor of the Wolf Pack. They fling it in the zone. And they needed something on that power play. Still, eight, still 8.41 to go. Just about midway through this third period. As Grant Coleman picks it up. Cohen skating right to left on the backhand sharp angle shot that would have been spectacular comes up the near side boards for Elliott to so Conan double shifting now out with Olsen and Garrett here on line number three so they're going to go to the well with Grant Conan Moss drops it for Rude pass down low drop makes the save and another save That's doesn't give up much save. of a rebound oh that was a beautiful passage of play from Park and Drum was wise to it. Great save by Drum here. Backdoor pass. And somehow he got across. I'm not sure if Schwartz put it where he wanted to, but Drum with a huge save. He keeps his team alive. JT Drum in his first varsity start has stopped 41 of 44 shots he's faced tonight. With speed. Blake Cohen trying to get there first. Battling with Winutka. Cohen out in front. They're jamming at it. Miller. And Miller spreads that left pad across and stuffs the opportunity. That's two huge saves. One at both ends. Miller there just stops. Telsher right on the doorstep or was it Knutson, but banging at it. And Miller just kept the pad along the ice. Miller just 17 stops tonight, but uh, he has made some big ones. And they're sliding the glove over, as you saw, to cover the puck. That was on Brady Knutson. Cross ice pass, Winutka a little bit behind him. They regain the zone anyway. Drum makes the save. And now Eastridge skates it back. Oh, great poke check to knock it free by Winutka. Cornish tries to walk his way through. Cornish ridden off the puck by Lighty. 
Off the window and held in by Freeman. Now it's picked up by Knutson. Knutson's got a two-on-one. Shoots! Scores! Brady Knutson, goal number eight on the season. And the East Ridge Raptors are on the board here in the third period. Knutson just fired it through Miller. Really didn't pick the corner, just muscle against muscle and got more on the shot than Miller could stop. And off the blocker, low to the corner. And that's what East Ridge needed. They couldn't connect on the power play, but they connect. And Knutson with a huge goal gives them life. They trail by two again. Long way to go, 7.20 left. And the Raptors trail by two. 3-1 the score now, as you see, 7-15 and counting. Left to go in the third, so Knutson tracks it down. As I said, Bill, the Raptors tend not to come back from big deficits. And tonight, if they can do it, this might be a huge momentum game pushing towards the end of the season. they got a long way to go, but a good start by Brady Knutson. Single assist goes to Polifka, so... Knutson Pung from Polifka for the first goal of the penalty. night back for Eastridge. Back to the box and goes uh, Park. Yeah. Holding the call, or hooking the call rather, as Max Kaplan, the guilty party. So Jay Moser talked about discipline when he was talking to Blythe Mosier. at the end of second period. And so far his team has made a parade to the penalty box, and he's going to give the Eastridge Raptors a chance. They're going to call a timeout and talk about it. And this Good is a go out. golden opportunity for the Raptors to get back in this one, trailing by two. Yeah, and I think this is a good timeout, Mark, because this is a huge power play. You're 0 for 3 tonight. See one of the assistant coaches for Eastridge talking to his troops. That's Matt Larson. He's first year. He's longtime coach, coached at Rosemount, coached at Hastings. Both he and Ben Tharp. Ben Tharp, the defensive Coach, he played a year for the Gophers, three years for the University of Miami at Ohio, so he's an accomplished player, but they've brought some stability to Coach Vogelzang. He can really watch the big picture, and he can you know, move the general's piece as well. Larson runs the forwards, and both the coaches have got the uh, undivided attention of the players. Yep, no question about it as uh, yeah, Jay Mosier. This is how you want to close out games, or not how you want to close out games, by going to the penalty box and giving team's opportunities to come back in, but uh, you can see the intensity on both benches. Yeah, I was going to make a comment around the 11-minute mark and didn't get a chance because of the flow of the play, but, you know, Park gets that third goal, and my comment was going to be that Park still remains as the aggressor. They were dumping it back in. They had all kinds of great chances. You know, not what I expected to see. I thought they might pull it back, you know, one in, one, two, two, four check, pull it back a little bit. They haven't. Maybe that's what Jay Moser wants them to do, keep the forward push going. But right now it's 3-1. They've let Eastridge claw back into this one. If they get the power play goal, we're going to have a frenetic last five. Wouldn't that be fun to see? The band has left, but just about everywhere, everybody else has stayed. And following tonight's contest, we hope to have a few on-ice interviews with Blythe Whaley. There's a shot from the point that goes past Miller's goal. Big check delivered by Blake Conan. It's all the way down, though, for Grant Conan. First power play unit out on the ice here for Eastridge. 140 left on the hooking minor. 624 to go in the hockey game. Rung around the boards by Tommy Lucas, but Lighty holds it at the point. Grant Conan. Nobody in front of the net in front of Miller. I wish they'd get somebody in front if for Eastridge and they could do it. There's some net front presence, and Miller makes a big save on that drive. Nice save. Comes all the way out to Tyler Cohen. Back to Grant Cohen at the point. He's forced out of the zone. Great defense by Rude. Or beg your pardon, that's Adam King. Now Cohen on the backhand, again with a head of steam. Cohen drives the net, shoots. Miller makes the save, and then his defender is there to pin the puck up against his pads. He didn't know where it was. Speed of Conan again comes back in. You're right, Miller makes the save. He didn't know it fell in front of him, and he found it as the Raptors are right on the doorstep. One minute left to go in this. I'm going to call it an absolute must. Here you see the rebound again. Miller gets. This is an absolute yeah. must score power play for the East Ridge Raptors, obviously. Maybe I'm restating the obvious here, but they need one if they're going to get back in. Centered all Tyler, or Elliot rather, or Blake Lighty, I should say, was right on the doorstep. They've lost him. Caden Schwartz had lost him. It's cleared all the way down. 
40 seconds, and now they'll try to kill off some more. Grant uh, Cohen takes a frustration penalty. That is exactly what it was, a frustration penalty, and you cannot take that penalty. Yeah, and that's, that's plain his day, too, as McCoy Winutka used his speed to get to the puck first, and Grant Cohen threw him down and took a badly timed penalty here for Eastridge, and as a captain, you just can't do that. So that penalty actually starts 200 feet down on the save by Aiden Miller. When Conan comes in, he makes the rush. Miller thwarts him again. He's had his number so far tonight. He comes back down, and I think that save and the frustration of Conan not being able to beat Miller yet causes that penalty down in the corner. So the Raptors now are going to be four on four for the next 31 seconds, and then a minute 29 of man advantage for Park. Good job by Lanahan to poke it free. Two minutes for roughing, centering pass. Oh, they had Moss wide on the doorstep. Wide looking open. for his hat trick, but ultimately couldn't find him. Bladel tied up in a board battle with Lanahan. Moss in there digging it out. Eight seconds remaining on four on four. Moss comes away with it, drops a pass back, but only finds Lanahan. Cohen's second penalty of the game. Taken at a very bad time. Now Park with a real opportunity to put this one away. Lanahan, as Rude loses a, an edge. Moss back to Rude at the left point. Shares it across above the right circle for Schwartz. These three have been involved a lot tonight. There's a shot saved comfortably up and out of play by Drum. Good play by Drum to get the whistle. His team needed it there. Gavin Moss in a wide open net for his third when he couldn't finish it. So a right on the doorstep. <laughs> I think he's thinking about it right now as we focus the camera angle in on him. He knew it. His, that net was wide open. And the usually sure-handed Moss couldn't put it away. Moss up to 20 goals on the season with his two in the second period. Nearing the 40-point mark. As... Trying to decide who's going to take the draw. Finally, Moss moves in. All kinds of deliberations. Moss picks up a puck in the right wing corner. He's back out on high. Rude. Wrist shot. And a save made by Drum. Good it's not easy from a player like Jackson Rude. Good save again. Again, good, good clear out though again by Blake Lighty. He just lets him see it. East Ridge will take that shot all day. That's exactly yep. what they want. Let shot him sit from up. the outside. Off the draw back to Korkish. He moves middle. Near side for Rude. Cross ice, Schwartz. There's a shot. Whistling wide. Back up the boards for Rude. Snaps a pass down low. Rude moves it across. Schwartz over for Rude. Korkish wheels away from pressure. Ruth thought about the one-timer, tries to get it out. They're just content to possess the puck right now. Ruth centers in front. And now a couple players get tangled up. Davis Polifka trying to protect his netminder. We've got a park player on the ice is Bladel, who's been involved in a lot of the fisticuffs tonight. Was uh, in front. Oh, good opportunity. Tipped in front. I think yeah. JT got a piece of it. Yeah, Plato was right there looking to redirect. Just 13 seconds left on the power play. Still a 3-1 lead here for Park of Cottage Grove. I like the fact that they didn't call any penalty there. Conan's got 13 seconds left, but could have been penalties here. The referee's going to let him play. Yeah, that's a good, good analysis of the situation. Eastridge off the draw, Moss back for Lucas left point. Moss for Rude, as we're back to full strength, five on five hockey. Lucas throws it on net drum. Atypical, that's Eastridge, I think that again all night, we've said it, flip it in from the point, no problem, we got a, Eastridge got a goaltender back there, they'll stop it. But I'm just surprised at how much Park has maintained the pressure here up 3-1. I guess Jay Moser wants him to keep pushing. Well, he talked about that. You know, he talked about that with our Blythe Whaley 
before the third period. He wants pedal to the metal and not let to, to not let Eastridge gather any momentum. And that has uh, been the case. There's a shot that Drum saves with the right pad. Drum, 50th shot face tonight. He may end up making 50 saves in this hockey game. I think he will. He stopped 47 of 50 shots tonight. But there Turns again. aside another one. All day long, they love it. That's exactly what the Raptors want to do. So the shot count gets up there, yeah, fifth, two and a half to one. But those outside shots, the Raptors have done a good job tonight. They just haven't found the offense. Three, 246 left. We're going to have to see if we'll keep JT Drum in there. Or get the extra attacker on. They'll definitely obviously need possession in the offensive zone to do that. Lucas. Comes down to play at left wing corner. 239 and counting to go in the hockey game. Jake Gonzaga banks it out of the zone and all the way down. I see the call. Now they're just having trouble even exiting their zone. So, you know, credit to, credit to Jay, Jay Mosier and Park sure. because the uh, application of pressure, keeping that foot on the gas has been successful Boston Widener scored the lone park goal of the period less than a minute in and again the Raptors used their timeout at the 638 yeah. mark on the power play so no timeout left for which was a good use of a timeout for sure time. yeah for sure but for coach Dustin Vogelgazang you know he's got line three out there right now which means he's got in his mind three to four shifts out there but it would be nice for him if he could get the Conan line out there and give him a break too There's a shot, Drum makes the save, spills a big rebound, but luckily his teammate was there to clear it. Swept into the zone by Hank Garrett and then carried right back on out. We're lucky that Gonzaga and that now, was and a penalty. Gets it. Jake he, Gonzaga. He, he called it late, but it was a penalty. It was. I looked down to the referee, he didn't have his arm in the air, and then a half a second later he You see Gonzaga there committing the frustration penalty. So Park with another opportunity to add to its uh, power play tally as uh, some fans begin to head to the exits. Eastridge wins the draw, and now they'll try to get a shorthanded goal. Chaucer fires it, and its save is made. Tyler Schwartz. Stover plays it in deep. It's a Wolfpack power play. Third penalty of the period committed by Eastridge. As Moss gains the zone, drops it back. There's a shot, and again, saved by Drum, and he can make that kind of save all day. Cohen out there, Grant Cohen. Moss, centers, looking for King. Ultimately, it's out to Schwartz at center, and he fires it into the East Ridge bench. 115 on the power play, just three seconds of overlap between game time and power play time. Stay with us after the game. We'll take a quick break, and then Blythe Whaley will have an interview with a couple players from the winning side. We're looking forward to that. Tyler Schwartz off the draw. To the slot fires it wide. Follow-up shot. Another post. And hits another post. Boy, I keep expecting to hear that familiar ting. I just have not should've heard it a, tonight. Should have been a call on Park there. The East Ridge bench is incensed. Into the zone. Big save by Miller once more. He's been pretty solid tonight. He 20 saves on 21 shots. 46 seconds remain. And drop back, there's a shot, and Moss has his hat trick. The hats cascade down on the ice here at the Cottage Grove Ice Arena. Gavin Moss, goal number 21 on the season to make it 4-1 Park. And again, beautiful feed, no chance at all for JT Drum on that one. As they just pass it across the drop pass, they just know where they're going to be. Ruth throws it, Moss opens up, and wide open there. 
Yeah, just beautiful passage of play and nothing, nothing that uh, Drum that. could do about that. He officially has made 51 saves tonight. He has been razor sharp tonight. Great debut for JT Drum. So yep. ha so happy for him. Lots to build on for for the young man, and obviously, oh for sure, he's got a couple more games. Gavin Moss yeah, taking some kudos. His first career hat trick. Yeah, it's great, great, great performance by Moss. I don't think Coach Dustin Volgazan is going to be very happy with a 55 shot performance, even though a lot of them were from the perimeter. There's still shots on goal. And the shots on goal come from your own end, so a lot of end time for Park. Well, they've been impressive tonight on their 15th win of the year. Indeed. Rude picks up another assist, his third of the night. Gavin Moss, who I'm sure we'll hear from in the post game, A hat trick with less than a minute left to go. Ten seconds remaining. East Ridge will fall to 10, 8, and 1 on the season and 4 and 5 in conference play. Park. Improves to 15 and 7 and 5 and 5 in Suburban East play. The horn sounds. Park has defeated East Ridge tonight here at home by a final of 4 to 1. We'll take a timeout, come back with analysis and interviews and more here as we continue on the South Washington County TV Hockey Classic from Cottage Grove. Did you know that 46% of homes don't have working smoke detectors? Most of these failures are from dead and disconnected batteries. The Woodbury Fire Department wants to ensure that every smoke detector is working properly, which is why we created a battery replacement program for senior citizens. All Woodbury senior citizens have to do is sign up and a member of the Woodbury EMS Fire Department will come out and replace your smoke detector batteries for you. You can sign up on the city's website or call 651-714-3600 to schedule an appointment. We want everyone to be safe, so let's all work together to make sure every home has a working smoke detector. Back here at Cottage Grove Ice Arena after a 4-1 win tonight for Park of Cottage Grove over Eastridge. And our Blythe Whaley is down on the ice with two of the stars of the game. Thanks, Bill. Standing right next to me is Moss. And you had a hat trick tonight. Of course, everyone saw the energy flying off of you. But what did it take for you to get revved up for this big game tonight? Well, I mean, hard first period, did not play well. Kind of just reset my head and just came out Hard as could be, my teammates picked me up and goals went in the net. So what emotions were brought up after you did get that third goal here late in the third period, getting your first career hat trick, how awesome. It was pretty awesome, especially against rival night and you know, the big student section, it was flying and yeah, it was a great hat trick, great experience. But just a sophomore, so I'm sure more good stuff from you to come, but awesome job tonight. Thank you going to step on over to you and of course having a stellar job in net only allowing one goal to slip through but that helped your team be able to win this game three to one how tough was it back there having to go through some of those penalties that you guys had well our defense did a great job of killing those penalties and they blocked a lot of shots for me so it wasn't too bad yeah. 
And as you uh, you think about this game as a whole, of course, you got through that first period, having that shutout, getting to feel really good, that second one as well. I mean, what was going through your head as you were in the third period after they did score? How did you stay confident? Just, you just got to keep going. You can't give up. You got to make sure you seal the deal and win the game. Well, awesome job going against your rival and getting this victory. Definitely a fun moment for yeah. you. Congrats. Thank you. Thanks, Phil. Thanks, Blythe. Appreciate your uh, work all night. And uh, uh, Mark Hodgins, your, your son wasn't able to play in this game, so a little disappointing for you, certainly, as uh, the father of an Eastridge player. But uh, we were treated between the JV game and the varsity game to some really quality hockey tonight. An amazing night of hockey. What an amazing crew we have here. Some of the shots they provided for us tonight were outstanding. Pleasure to call it. You know, both games, Park wins them both. I think the or the uh, the JV game very close. Tonight for East Ridge, I mean, the shots were 55-21. I don't really think that told the story. Both coaches have good things to take away from as they get ready for sectional play. You know, East Ridge is going to look and say, hey, how do, we, how do we limit it? But, hey, JT Drum comes out and plays an outstanding game today. And I think the defense played a great, did a great idea all the way through. It talked about how they cleared the zone for them. So good things to work on for East Ridge as they get ready. I think they're still seven and three after. And for Park, 15 wins. They're working on a record season here as they get ready for sections. Yep, they improved to 15 and seven on the season. East Ridge, meanwhile, falls to 10, eight, and one. They still have six games remaining, and they uh, host Stillwater here on Saturday. Meanwhile, Park hosts Hastings in their next game. So. That'll do it for uh, for us here. Mark Hodgins, thanks for your time. It was great. Let's do it again soon. Great call, Bill. Congratulations to the Park Cottage Grove, and thanks to the South Washington County television crew. Guys did a great job. Absolutely. Neil Hennon directing, Ted LaRue on uh, replay. Our entire crew here for the SWCTC did a fantastic job. So for my broadcast partner, Mark Hodgins, director Neil Hennon, and our entire uh, sidelines, Blythe Whaley, and our entire crew with Bill Hub saying goodnight here from Cottage Grove Ice Arena, where again the final Park of Cottage Groves downs Eastridge 4-1 in the SWCTC Hockey Classic. <laughs>